In this tutorial, I'm going to go through and make a column. I'm going to use a number of spline modeling techniques in order to do it. So I already have a reference file set up, uh, which has uh, this column inside here. One thing to note is that when I made this reference, I made it so that the base of the column sits at zero in the plane, and it is four meters high. Right? So I wanted to have the top of it be right up at the four meter mark and the base down at zero. So let's go ahead and we'll make this viewport. We'll go ahead and maximize it. There we go. And just to make things a little bit easier as we work, why don't we open up the material editor. And I'm going to say material, get all scene materials. And I'm going to click on the material itself and change the diffuse color to black and say OK. And then down here under maps, I'm going to change the amount for the diffuse color map. And so that's the texture image being applied. I'm going to set that to 25 and then close this. So now my reference image is mostly gray. And that means when I go and draw out splines, the splines will be very easy to see here. So all right, let's come in here. I'm going to go to create. And I'm going to start off by defining the shape of the column itself. So let's zoom in a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of get some basic points in there and then just stop. Look, I'm not going to worry about getting all the details yet. I have the basic shape of it. Now I'm going to come in here. Note that I, I am working over here in the positive X space. So let's go into vertex. We can start refining. So I'm going to move, let's move this point over, move this point over. And I'm going to start defining this a little better. You can always double check your reference. If you go and click on the general tab of your viewport and say configure viewport, there's an option under display performance for texture maps. Currently, it's saying the maximum size I will allow a texture to be is 4096. Right now, the default is 512. So if I set this to 512 and apply, right, my image is going to be a little bit more blurry. So I'm going to leave it at 4096 because that'll allow really large images in there. So you probably didn't see anything change when I did that subtle change there. Um, that's because it's it's not really going to. You need to close out that window, and I didn't really want to go in and out of there. That wasn't the point of this tutorial. I just clicked on refine over here under geometry. I'm going to add a couple extra points in to kind of find the shape. All right, so I want to get this little lip coming out here over on the side. Let's refine another point in there. So we'll kind of have that little shape showing up here. We're going to get this one underneath. Kind of, I mean, what I'm doing is I'm trying to grab it in the in the box because that just gives me free movement everywhere. So let's uh, refine this a little bit more. Bring this point down. Bring this point up. Kind of want to get some of this nice stair stepping that's in there because that that detail is really nice to see when you can get that to show up. Right, that's looking pretty good. We'll come on down here to the bottom. We'll move this point over. Let's see. Just, let's just kind of define the bottommost point. Sort of edge kind of comes down. Another one kind of comes up and over. Bring these shapes around. All right. These are looking pretty good. If you want to, here's a trick for lining things up. If you make sure you have corners, right? I have both those together. If you go to scale, I'm going to change my pivot point center to 
selection center. And if I just hold Y and drag, that actually will get those to line up with each other. It's a fun little hack to do to get things to line up. You don't have to do this. It's but if you're if you're ever curious that that's the that's a workaround there for dealing with that. All right. So let's just go to the top level and now I'm going to go ahead and put a lathe modifier on this. And let's do min center max. All right. So in this case, this thing's not even going far enough over. So we have to go into the axis here and move it over. Now, I did set up the reference, so it's at zero. So I may be able to take, because I am on the axis, I may be able to send F, enter a value of zero for it. Remember, if it's showing up all dark unlit like this, you just need to click flip normals. So normals are showing up. So it looks like my reference isn't totally centered. We'll just focus on the right side here, because that's the, the side that is pretty much on there. Uh, if you want to go back and make tweaks and adjustments to your shape, you could turn on show and results and you could go in and refine it at this point if you want to go in and make any additional kind of adjustments to it. One thing I'd like to point out is eventually we're going to take this column and we're going to put it into a game engine. We're going to bring it into and use as a game asset. So let's avoid having any curves. Let's make sure that everything we do on this is made out of corners. Okay. So my column's looking pretty good at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the base. All right. And so we're going to start off by, uh, let's, I'm going to click uh, minimize, maximize here. And over here on the top, I'm just going to make a rectangle and now I'm going to go to move and I'm going to center it at zero. There we go. And now I'm back in the front again. So let's maximize that. All right. So here's my, here's my column. There's my base. So let's just uh, adjust these values. If I click and drag on this, let's not change anything. So let's grab width. There we go. So if I bring the width in, so it kind of matches the outer edge, that's all I want. So let's say 62 is going to work. I'll tab up to the length and put that at 62 so those values are square. All right. So next we want to define kind of the, the space. Now we're not going to use lathe. This time we're going to use bevel profile. So here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to build our shape out of multiple shapes, like the profile that we're going to reference. So I'm going to just drag a rectangle out here. And then let's put another one right here and another one right here. I'm just going to make a series of rectangles. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach all these together and then use Boolean on them in order to create kind of the shape that we want. All right, there we go. So let's select the main original rectangle, right click and convert to edit spline. From there, we're going to go into attach. Let's start attaching all of these rectangles we just made together. All right, be careful not to get the, the base one that's down there. All right, right click, get out of there. And now I'm going to go into the sub object to spline and select that main shape. I'm going to set my Boolean to union. And now I'm just going to go through and just start clicking on these objects. And you can see this is giving me this really nice, clean base model. And what I'm going to do at this point is actually in segment, I'm going to go through and I'm going to select the segment on the very top and delete it, the side, and all these over here. So I just have kind of these main points. Let's grab this bottom. I'm going to set his Z axis to zero and then grab all of them, right click and say corners. Now they're all those hard corner edges. All right. So I'm going to call this base underscore profile. And then if I select that uh, other original rectangle, let's restore our viewports. You can see that down here, there's that original, you know, base. And so we'll just call this base underscore path. And so now with that base path selected, now we want to find our bevel profile. And we're going to switch to classic 
and we're going to pick a profile. So let's click on that. There he is. All right. So now we now we have our shape. And so part of this is uh, the reason this worked. We got this to work so cleanly and easily was in the top view. In the top view, we created the path that uh, made sure that you know, it was kind of oriented the correct way. And then we made sure we drew out our spline in the front on positive X over here. And so we got this really nice shape for it. All right, so see how we're getting this nice detail in our model here. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna maximize this viewport. I'm gonna come up here to the top. And now we kind of want to get this, this upper portion for our column. So we're gonna do it just like we did the last one. Let's go ahead and make a rectangle. So we'll kind of define the main body of this shape. And then we'll just kind of go through and define the different shapes here that we want to get. And don't worry about getting them perfect. You can always go back and refine them after the fact. That's one of the great things of working with splines, right? You just kind of Go back, get your basic uh, structure in there, and go back and refine it. So let's let's grab this main rectangle, right click, convert to edit spline, and now I'm going to go through and attach. So let's go through and click on each one of these to attach them together. There we go. So we've gone through, kind of attached all those. So we'll right click to get out of attach mode, go into spline click on that main spline and now under boolean right it's still on union so we'll turn on boolean and we'll just go through and click on each of these shapes to get this shape that we want here for our column all right that's looking pretty good let's go into segment and we'll just we'll delete the top the back and the bottom there so now we'll just go into vertex to bring it on home, right click and say corner. And then if there's any if any tweaking or adjusting we want to do, we can grab those points and kind of refine them a little bit. Maybe bring that in slightly. Ooh, I think I need to go to segment here to select this easily. And then pull that over. There we go. Can bring this guy down a little bit. Go to vertex. All right, there we go. So that gives us kind of the top. And so now all we need to do is just make that shape, right? And so this would be top underscore profile. And so let's, we're just gonna come up here and say restore viewports. And then uh, I can actually, here's what I could do. I could select this base path. And if I right click and say clone, as a copy say okay i could remove that bevel profile and then raise that up so let's look here in the front we're going to raise up that shape so it's sitting right up here all right and now we can maybe make it a little bit smaller looks like it might be a little bit too big so let's adjust the width to bring it in some there we go there we'll bring that into like let's say 46 and we'll say 46 for both sides to square it off. And now we'll put a bevel profile on it. And so this will be, we'll change the name, top underscore path. We're just doing this to keep these files organized for ourselves. They'll still work even if you don't change the name on them. So now I put on bevel profile, change my parameters to classic, and I click pick profile. And there we go. Now I have the top. For my column if i orbit around you could see it so you could go back and refine this the reference that i'm using is kind of from more of an overall structure if it were an individual column just standing there you may not want it like this so let's go back and we'll refine it a little bit let's i'm going to pop open my scene explorer yours may already be open what i want to do is i just want to select my top profile I'm going to right click here and just kind of move that over so I can actually see it easier. There we go. Close my scene explorer. I'm going to go into vertex 
And I'm just going to take all these vertex points here. And I just want to kind of take these edges and kind of bring them out a little bit more. There we go. I think that looks better to me. All right, we could take all of them if we wanted and move them over. But you see how that adjusts where it sits on the shape? So I think this looks good. So now uh, this kind of, if I orbit around, we could see there's our shape because we uh, closed off the top or made it an open spline. It capped it off at the top and bottom. So here's what we're going to do to finish this off. I'm going to go ahead and go to create. I'm going to go to geometry, click box, and under keyboard entry, I'm going to enter 100, 100, 100, and hit create. Now I have a 100 unit box. I'm going to right click on it and say convert to edit poly. And now under attach, under edit geometry, I'm going to click attach. I'm going to click on the main spline, the main column, the top. I'm going to go into element here. Oops, let's turn off attach. Drag this down so you can see it. I'm going to go into element. I'm going to actually going to click on this giant box at the bottom. And then I'm going to click attach and attach the base. So what that did, spines sometimes have um, their orientations can be a little bit different. Now we have this column. It is centered at zero. All three of the portions of it are all attached together so it's one continuous model and let's go ahead and give it a name column and there we go now we'll want to save this file take a snape uh, snip and uh, turn that in but then definitely save this file and hang on to it because we're going to use this for a later assignment and bring it into a game engine all right so that's how you make a column